Okay, we're about to jump into the Hebrew word of road, and we're going to talk about a dinosaur. Yes, I said a dinosaur. <laughs> so it's actually a stronghold, but we'll get more into that in just a second. Okay, so remember, we're actually in Genesis chapter 24, verse 48. And we're, we have been breaking down the sentence um, because remember, Abraham's servant went to go and find a wife for Isaac. And so we're breaking down the sentence where the servant says, talking about God, who led me on the right road to take. So he was giving thanks and praise to God because God had led him on the right road to take to find Isaac's wife. So we're breaking down the word road, road. So the Hebrew meaning for the word road is course of life. So when the Holy Spirit was talking to me about the course of life and about the people of God, um, about the people of God allowing him to place them on the right road that leads to their kingdom spouse. When he was talking to me and telling me about the people of God allowing him to place them in the right course of life, because again, Road in Hebrew means course of life. He then brought me to Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9, and it says this. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Jesus is Alpha and Omega, he sees the beginning from the ending. He is the eternal God. Eternity is in the palm of his hands. He's already written it. Everything that we're meant to do in life, it's already been written. It's already been written in the books of heaven. And so we can always know that we're doing what's right, that we're making the right choices, the right decisions, because we're following the leading of the Holy Spirit. In that sense, you never have to be confused, even if you don't know what's ahead of you. So that's where you get we walk by faith and not by sight in Jesus' name. Because you're walking by your faith in the unseen God, in our Messiah, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So you're walking in that faith of I'm trusting him. I may not know where I'm going. I may not know where I'm going to end up. But I know that the Holy Spirit is leading me and he has my best interest at heart. And all I can receive is benefits from serving the Lord. The next scripture that he brought me to is Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you and to give you a future and a hope. The next Bible verse he brought me to is Psalms 32, verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will give you counsel and watch over you. I'm going to say it again. That's, that's powerful. Psalms 32, verse 8. Jesus says, I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will give you counsel and watch over you because he is a good father. He is Abba Father. And if we allow him to, he will lead us. Yes, we do have to allow him to. Because again, we have permissive will. So you can choose to take your own course of life. You can choose your own road and your own course of life that you want to live. But that's why it's so important that we stay before God reading Psalms 139 verse 24 or praying Psalms 139 verse 24. And that one says, See if there is any offensive way in me, lead me in the way everlasting. And that was actually the next Bible verse that the Holy Spirit led me to. Psalms 139 verse 24. See if there is any offensive way in me, lead me in the way everlasting. 
So that means that we're willing to be transparent before Jesus. And that means that we're willing to have an open ear to the spirit of God. Like it says in, in the book of Revelations, that the spirit of God, those who have an ear to hear, to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying, we are, our spiritual ears have to be open to Jesus and to the Holy Spirit. Now, no third eye. Our spiritual ears. Are we open to the Holy Spirit so he can critique us, so he can transform us, so he can remold us and refashion us? Why? Because he is the potter and we are the clay. He molds us as he wills. And his will is always the best will because he is our father and he loves us and he always has our best interest at heart. So we should always stand before the Lord praying, Father, see if there is any offensive way in me, even things that I may not know about. Is there anything in myself? Is there anything in my heart? Is there anything in my soul? Is there anything in my mind that is offensive to you, that is sin to you, that is rebellion to you, that is disrespect to you, Jesus? See if there is any offensive way in me. Psalms 139 verse 24. And then lead me in the way everlasting. And this is something that God was telling me about this right road to take. It is a part of it. It is also the way of everlasting. This right road. That God is placing his people on. So it will lead them to their kingdom spouse and they can have the kingdom family that God has created for them to have, that God died for them to have, that God, that Jesus shed his blood for them to have, that kingdom family, that kingdom union, so that you're no longer living under demonic curses and barriers. He also sent me to uh, Job 40 verses 15 through 19. Because again, in Psalms 139, the prayer is see if there is any offensive way in me. And like God was telling me, you know, sometimes there's things in you that you don't know is there. There's things that you may need deliverance from that you never knew you needed deliverance from. Job 40 verse 15 through 19. This is where the dinosaur comes in. <laughs> it's actually... Um, it's a hippopotamus and his name is behemoth and it and god talks about behemoth in job 40 verses 15 through 19 and so behemoth is a prehistoric hippopotamus so it's not like modern day hippos hippopotamuses like hippopotamus are already big but it's not the size of how a modern day hippopotamus looks it's a prehistoric large extremely large hippopotamus because it was like from the dinosaur times okay it's not the evolved modern hippopotamus today <laughs> but in job 40 verse 15 through 19 god says to job look at behemoth which i made along with you he feeds on grass like an ox see the strength of his loins and the power in in the muscles of his belly his tail sways like a cedar. The sinews of his thighs are tightly knit. His bones are tubes of bronze. His limbs are rods of iron. He is the foremost of God's works. Only his maker can draw the sword against him. Now, if you remember correctly, in the previous videos, I told you God was telling me that for a lot of you, you're going to have to fast and war in the realm of the spirit so you can be placed on the right road that God wants to put you on that's leading you to your kingdom spouse, just like the situation with Isaac and Rebecca, Abraham's servant. God placed Abraham's servant on that right road that was leading him to find Isaac's bride. So with this Job 40. God wants you to 
go on this fast, like we talked about in Isaiah 58, so that there are no barriers, so that there is nothing within you that you may be carrying from your bloodline through generational curses or even demonic covenants that you have either knowingly or unknowingly engaged in and attached yourself to. So that he can rid you and cleanse you and free you from demonic alliances that you may have connected yourself to, again, knowingly or unknowingly. So the Holy Spirit is saying, ask me to reveal. Ask me to reveal what lies behemoth within me. Cry out to the Lord while you're on this fast and ask the Holy Spirit to show you and to reveal to you what is in you that is behemoth. See, the thing about behemoth, when you read that Job 40, it hides and it lives in the marsh. Marsh is murky waters, muddy, murky waters that you can't see through. It's not, it's not that fresh spring well of water. It's not that clear water where you can look down and see your feet in. Behemoth lives in dirty, disgusting, muddy waters. So behemoth is a stronghold. And it's connected with the unclean spirits. Unclean spirits. Sin is filth. Unrighteousness is filth to God. So that's where it hides. And again, God is Alpha and Omega. He sees beyond what, he could, what we could ever see. So as you're fasting and you're praying and you're crying out to God and you're praising the Lord, asking him to place you on the right road that leads you to your kingdom spouse, and you're surrendering to Jesus and you're saying, according to Psalms 139, verse 24, show me if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You want to be delivered from demonic strongholds and barriers and poverty and suicide and demonic forces. You want to be delivered from those things. So as God is leading you to your kingdom spouse, as he's leading you on that journey, on that right road, your journey would be successful. Just like Abraham said in Genesis 24, verse 40, the Lord will send his angel with you and make your journey a success. The Lord wants to send his angel with you to make your journey a success. That, that's, that this road that you're taking that's leading you to your kingdom spouse will be successful and you will find your kingdom spouse. You will not end up in a dead end. But God wants to rid out of you anything that's lingering, anything demonic, any sin, any iniquity, any transgression. Ask him, is there any offensive way in me, Lord? Because I don't want to be offensive to you, Jesus. And just like it says in verse 19, only his maker can draw the sword against him. Talking about behemoth. Who's the maker of behemoth? God. God is the creator of all things. So only God can draw the sword against him. So as you're fasting and praying, you have to de decree the scriptures. You have to decree the word of God over your life because the sword is symbolic of the word of God. Just like it says in Ephesians 6, putting on the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, girding your loins with the belt of truth, covering your feet with the gospel of peace. So it's only the sword of the spirit. It's only the sword of the living God that can draw out behemoth, that can pull him out of your life and deliver you. So there's nothing buried in you. There's nothing lurking in you. No strongholds, totally clean, Holy Spirit filled by the blood of Jesus. 
You know, there's people that get married and then all of a sudden one person commits adultery and they're like, I don't know how this happened. We were so happy. Everything was so great. This came out of nowhere. That's usually an indication that a behemoth stronghold was lying within that person. And when they came into a covenant union, of course, Satan likes to steal, kill and destroy. That stronghold came out, popped up. And that person ended up falling to the, to the temptation of the enemy. Jesus. Holy Spirit. By the blood of Jesus, I decree that everyone who watches this video Everyone who's watching these teachings are delivered from every behemoth, demonic, lying stronghold. That you are delivered from things that you don't even know that you need deliverance from. That you will not stay bound. You will not be tricked by the enemy. See, because the enemy likes for people to be progressing along on their journey of life going on this road that the Holy Spirit put them on, headed towards destiny and purpose and finding their kingdom spouse. And then up they fall. And although a righteous man falls seven times, he gets back up. But if you can avoid the fall, if the Holy Spirit can show you, hey, you got something in there that needs to come out. It's not of me. It's not my way. It's a stronghold you carry in. You need deliverance. You need your mind renewed. That's why it's so important to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why it's so important for Christians to have a lifestyle of fasting so that you're not giving any place to the devil in your life. Jesus. That's all the Holy Spirit has as far as for this teaching like I said, there's there's so much revelation to this Genesis 24. Go and read it, especially if you desire kingdom marriage, especially if you desire that kingdom spouse. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe what the world is saying that, you know, being single and not being married and all that. Like, if you want to be married, it's okay to want to be married. And also don't settle. Don't accept the counterfeit. Don't fall for the counterfeit. You are authentic and the Holy Spirit is going to give you authentic. May God bless you. I decree that this teaching, these scriptures, this revelation transforms you, heals you, gives you clarity as you take this journey. In Jesus' name, I decree what Abraham said according to Genesis 24, verse 40 over your life, that the Lord will send his angel with you. The Lord will send his angel with you and make your journey a success. May you be successful in everything the Holy Spirit has chosen and called you to do. In Jesus' name, be blessed.